you please introduce yourself? My name is Lucas Ruwoki. I own a digital agency on VenturePlex, uh, and I blog at OneHungryMind.com, and so that's where a lot of my content comes from, and I think that's where the community uh, generally knows me from. Okay. And uh, you were giving a talk uh, at NGConf on Electron? So I actually did a full-day workshop on Electron, and then on the first day I gave a talk on Electron from the context of just changing the way that people think about JavaScript and some of the things that uh, you can do. So it was a really kind of an interesting, fun performance piece that we integrated some MIDI controllers into an Electron app as well as made it an entire slideshow. So actually the, people, the slides were an Electron as well. It was all one kind of integrated app that we put together. So you have some hardware hooked up to, to uh, an Angular app? Yeah, so the idea was when I first uh, was thinking about the application is I was watching a video on YouTube and this uh, gentleman had a talk box and this kind of Moog MIDI keyboard thing and he was just doing something really funky. And that feeling that I got when I watched that video, I thought, I'd like, I want to do a presentation around this feeling. Mm. And so my friend is a professional musician and so we pitched it to the powers that be and the idea was, well, let's take an actual physical like MIDI device hook it into our computer and do something with it in Angular. So kind of the underlying theme was have an out of browser experience with Electron. Wow, sounds really interesting. What do you think opens up for people when they start to play around with Electron and Angular? So the opportunities, let's back up for just a second and go up like a 30,000 foot view. Okay. I think it's a bit precarious sometimes when you wrap your identity up to like a single technology. So okay. I used to be a Flex Flash developer and you know I'm, I'm a Flex developer and that was my identity and then obviously that did not end well um, or as well as that I think a lot of people hope. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I don't, I'm not a Flex developer in this case, is that I build things and I happen to use Flex. And mm -hmm. so as an Angular developer, is it's easy to say I'm an Angular developer and you wrap your identity up in that. But at the end of the day, I build things and I just happen to use Angular. And so the primary, I think the focus for developers in general should be to build things that people love. And this is actually mm -hmm. at NGConf, that's a huge thing that's just been put out is that, you know, build things that people love, build tools that people love and have a community that people love to be in. Mm -hmm. Well, with Electron and Angular, these are tools that help us build things faster. So how do you know what you're building is something that somebody's going to love? Well, with the right tools, it helps you build things faster and get it in front of people. And so I'm really passionate about this idea of getting these feedback loops. And so, or traditionally, being a native developer, it would have taken you just months and months and a really long time to get a, a native mm -hmm. desktop application. I have taken an existing Angular application, turned it into a desktop application in just a matter of minutes. And so, mm -hmm. in fact, you can take an Angular CLI generated application and in about three to five minutes, on the first try, just following a couple simple instructions, now you have a desktop application, and that's a game changer because now you're no longer stuck in the browser, but you now have a desktop application that you can pass around, hmm. and you have access to pretty much a lot of the fundamental underlying like operating system things that you can now start to integrate and do some even more powerful things, and so that is truly an out-of-browser hmm. experience, but it's super easy to take your existing skill set and build something, get feedback, put it in front of people, and get that feedback and realize, mm. like, hey, like they love this. And wow. that's to me is the, the biggest value is to build things better and faster using existing an existing skill set. In this case, Angular, it's very very mm. easy. And what other kind of things have you seen actually made with Electron? Sure. So I mean, the mini thing was pretty interesting, but I'll expand on that one second. So mm. or just real quick is that. If you go watch my talk at NGConf, it's very musical, like we're playing you know, keyboard, but what I realized is I can actually just hook up a MIDI controller and it's a bunch of switches. And so for instance, I could hit one of the pads on the MIDI controller mm -hmm. and interpret it or pick it up in my Electron app, use that, basically that as a trigger to call like a REST API that calls like a keg, you know, out, a, you know, an internet connected like keg out in like right, Minnesota right, right. and starts pouring beer in some cafeteria. And then when I let it up, to do that, so I think of really MIDI controllers just being a switch that you can connect to anything else. So that's one application. Is you now hardware, you can integrate it. It's that's really cool. easy to do that. Another thing that I've seen is if you're doing repetitive tasks over and over. So for instance, I have a large client that when we do work on their stuff, we have to log into a VPN, we have to do the ceremony thing, like, did, 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 like four or five things. You could wrap that in an Electron app. So one of my developers has a script 
that he runs um, at the command line. And so he has to open up the terminal, run it, and it runs the script. Well, you could wrap that in an Electron app and just put it in your tray and just have, for instance, client profiles. So as a developer, that's really handy to be like, okay, I'm working on this client, boom, spins up your VPN, does a couple of things, and you're like, I'm done, tears it down, I'm going to the next client and doing that. So I know a couple of my friends that if they do anything repetitive, repetitive, they just wrap it in an Electron app. Now, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I have been in a large, a, a large amount of enterprise client situations where they're like, we would love to do this. But unfortunately, our developers or our, actually our employees are on like Windows 7 or Windows 8 or yeah. there's a legacy system or we are only on Internet Explorer 9 or there's some browser things that prevent us from doing this and we can't just roll out on 10, you know, to 10,000 computers. Yeah. Well now you can circumvent that entirely by building the app and it, if it runs in Chrome, it'll run in Electron. Yeah. And so now you can circumvent this entire thing of like we have to upgrade all the browsers for every single employee, what you simply do is wrap it in an Electron application and you distribute it like a normal installable application. And so even when I was doing the MIDI thing, is the MIDI API is not very well supported um, across other browsers, but because it's in Chrome, I didn't have to think about that. So now creating the single like environment that you are targeting, in this case the Chrome browser, you can make some assertions about this is how this is going to behave every single time. And that is a huge, huge value to enterprise developers who are in a situation where they have to support 10,000 people potentially on legacy systems. That's very cool. Uh, be able to target a modern browser with the application without having to yeah. worry about uh, compatibility with AE8 or 9, I think yeah. is uh, quite a meaningful change for a lot of developers. And it's really easy, I think, for some people to be like, everything runs on Chrome, and they just think in Chrome, but it can be really painful for when you have to support some of these legacy browsers. I've seen applications kind of devolve where they have to compromise the user experience of what it could have been because you know, 20 percent of their user base is on these legacy browsers. And so being able to control that is, is really, I think, a huge value add, not only to the organization, but to the users because they now have a better experience and a desktop-like experience that, that they can control. Got it. So, uh, Electron is a, a browser wrapper, right? Mm -hmm. And what else does it have inside that makes it possible to do all these interesting things? So, Electron fundamentally is you're taking Chromium, which is kind of the Chrome like OS. So, mm -hmm. they've basically taken Chrome and kind of beefed it up to run as an operating system. And you're wrapping it in this Node.js runtime. And mm -hmm. so, you have really kind of this main process, which is the main. Um, the, the main process or the node runtime, and then you have Chromium, which is your render uh, process. And so they kind of work together. So when you build an Angular application, that goes, basically gets loaded in as a render process. So it's just rendering your web page, and then your main process, this is what you use to actually communicate to like your operating system, and then there's this um, inter-process communication uh, mechanism, which is just really an event emitter or an event bus that you send messages back and forth. In the workshop, we did this application, what's called ElectroSnap, where you would actually use your webcam and it would capture a picture, and then we would save it to the hard drive, and so you're able to basically integrate and say like, hey, I want to save this, here's this image, and put it on the desktop or wherever. And then also one other thing we were able to do is at the render or the main process rather, upload that into Dropbox. Mm. And so kind of those integrations. But the idea is you have really the main process, which integrates with the operating system, and the render process, which renders your web application. And then that's kind of the two main pieces. So it's really simple at first. You're like, this is what it is. And then most Angular developers, or really you'll spend 80 or even maybe 90% of your time in the render process, just building your app out and then putting your hooks into your operating system. How do you think uh, thinking in Electron is different than thinking um, of, of just for, for the browser alone? Initially, it's very similar. I mean, there's a very little leap. I mean, cognitively, it's just like, okay, I'm in the browser, now all, all of a sudden, like, ta-da, I'm in a desktop application. Mm -hmm. And that's really, to just get up and running, there's really no shift. And it's very, to me, it was very novel. But then when you start thinking about, like, wait a second, I can actually run, like, node code that interacts with my operating system, and that's where it was even the premise of my entire presentation on the first day is, what are, some, what are some really cool things that you can do? And so I would say, if you were looking into Electron and start out and just realize, hey, I can do this here and I can do this here, but then start to think about what are some like, crazy things that I can do. And so you definitely have to expand your mind to things traditionally that 
um, we don't really think about because it's not really available in the browser. Now all of a sudden, it's it's fair game. I mean, you can do anything. Is that you know, if you can do it in Node, you can do it in your um, Electron app. In fact, you can even uh, write native code. So now you can do like a native extension that mm -hmm. runs in Node that then you can call from your render process. And so the point is, if you can do it as a desktop application, you can do this as you know, an Electron app mm. from really JavaScript and, it's, and control that. So I would say the biggest mental shift is really expand your boundaries to realize that this is a whole new world. There's so many more things that we can do. And, uh, and from there, approach your creativity from that point. It's really interesting. Are there any resources or tools that you think people should know while you know, getting into Electron? There is uh, the Electron app, or the Electron documentation mm -hmm. is pretty good, so I would definitely start there. They have a really good quick start. And interestingly enough, when I create an Electron app, the your main Electron JavaScript file, I just copy it right from that page. Like I don't type it out. I just I'm doing a new Electron app. I'll just go to the quick start. I'll copy their main JS and I'll paste it in. It's mm -hmm. about I want to say maybe 60, 70 lines of code. So obviously I'm not going to type that. So right. definitely look up the Electron Quick Start, and they have a kind of a kitchen sink API sample app that has some really good stuff in there to just like get a feel for what you can do, mm -hmm. um, as well as on my blog, I have a pretty um, long form a blog post. It's called Electron, all the Angular 2 things. And so there's some screencast um, that I did there mm -hmm. from my last year's workshop. I'm going to update that. Uh, a few of the steps um, have actually become streamlined because of the Angular CLI. Um, as well as there is, um, if you Google awesome Electron apps, mm -hmm. there's a repository there um, with a lot of just really cool uh, stuff that you can do. Very nice. And uh, if uh, someone wants to follow your work with Electron and other pro projects, what, um, what's the best way to find you on the internet? The best place is, well, there's a few places. So one, obviously, Twitter. It's Simpleton, so that's S-I-M-P-U-L-T-O-N. And at my blog, One Hungry Mind. And I also have videos out on AKET.io as well. So if somebody um, you wanted to learn a bit more about you know, Angular, Ionic, or a couple of different things that I've done, as well as uh, Front End Masters, uh, you can catch me there as well. Oh, thank you, Lucas. Thank you. Do we shake hands now? Do we make Good this official? Yeah. <laughs> hey there. Are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Then join this dot instructor, Ben Lesh, to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today.